God bless you, beloved. Heaven smile on you on this Thursday. It has been a, an exceptionally blessed day on my side, and I pray that it's been the same for you. It was my desire to share with you out of the word of God for a few minutes, and I pray, as always, that it be a blessing. You know, heaven and earth is going to pass away, but the, the word of the Lord will abide forever. The word of the Lord is going to outlast everything. All of your trouble is going to be outlasted. It's going to be bested by the word of God. The word of God is going to stand. So a couple of thoughts. Matthew, the, the 13th chapter. In that chapter, in the gospel according to St. Matthew, Jesus begins to describe in a parable, uh, and it is called the parable of the sower or one who sows seed, or a farmer. Notice that when one farms, one goes to till the ground, a farmer goes and tills ground, but when the farmer goes to till the ground, the success of the farmer in tilling that ground to cultivate a crop has a lot to do with the quality of the seed, but also has a lot to do with the quality of the ground. And so according to the revelation that comes to me, one thing that we need to understand about God is that he is a master of agriculture, that he is an amazing farmer. Seed time and harvest. And seed time and harvest actually begin long before you think it began. Because the Bible said in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Then it says, well, how did he do that? All right, well, the earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. The spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. Here it come, and God said, let there be. Literally, the word that was always in the bosom of the Father was declared into the void into the nothingness and sowed his word as a seed into the pregnant possibility of this earth was which was without form and void and everything that the, that the father declared came to pass according to his word that he seeded all right for those of us who have come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ as it pertains to us taking a quantum leap over into the New Testament. The Bible tells us that faith comes by hearing, that hearing comes by the word of God. Okay, so again, we're talking about, we, we're looking at this parable of Jesus and in this parable of Jesus, it's telling us that literally that there was seed that was, that was sown by the sower and it's saying that in the in the initial state that this seed was sown and some of the seed fell by the wayside. All right. So we had good seed. But in the first instance that Jesus described, the seed fell by the wayside, which means it did not actually take root in any soil at all by the wayside or on the outskirts of the soil. And so when 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 good seed is released but doesn't actually connect to soil, what happens is the potential of that seed is only going to be released when that seed is able to take root in soil. We need to understand that. You can have good seed, you can have amazing seed, but yet the potential of that seed to bring forth fruit or to bring forth a crop that will lead to the production of fruit is impossible unless that seed takes place in ground. So Jesus is telling us this for a reason, okay? So in the first instance, the seed does not take root in any ground. Then in the second instance, it says that the seed fell upon stony places. So you had some soil, but you actually had in the stony places, you had more rocks than you had soil. And so, so those who know things about agriculture and know things about farming specifically know that if you're going to plant seed in the ground, you may see the ground, but if, if that farmer notices that that ground is full of stones and rocks, they actually take the time to dig the rocks out of the soil. And the reason they dig the rocks out of the soil is because if there are rocks and there's stones inside of the soil, when the seed begins to open up because it's watered, what's going to happen is when it begins to take root, it's not going to be able to take root. It's not going to be able to take root because the stones are going to prevent this seed from taking root. Okay, what we're able to gather before we even go on, what we're able to gather is that every environment is not an environment in which good seed can bring forth good fruit or bring forth fruit at all. The seed holds the potential, but the potential is not going to be realized unless that seed is, is placed in an environment. This environment would be the good ground. 
If the seed is not placed in good ground, the potential of the seed is never going to be seen. Let's look at this further. So there was another instance that said, there's another instance where it says the seed fell among thorns. So there was ground, but there were thorns that came and began to suffocate the seed. And again, as that seed began to open up, once water hits it and it's an environment, the seed says, okay, well, I'm going to open up and I'm going to release my potential, but then it's choked by thorns. So we have three instances, one in which it didn't take root in any ground at all. A second instance in which the seed fell among stony places and could not take root because there were rocks in the soil. Taking a moment to say, Jesus said that he was able to remove the stony heart and give us a heart of flesh. The stony heart is a heart that is laden with unbelief. A stony heart is a heart that cannot receive the truth of God's word as truth. Now, Jesus said in John 3, 16 and 17, especially in 17, it said, He that believeth not is condemned already. The Bible said that the fool said in his heart, there is no God. So when a man harbors unbelief in his heart, the word of God, the good word of God, as difficult as it is for some of us to fathom, the good word of God will not prosper in a heart of unbelief. That's why Jesus said, listen, if you don't believe, you already condemned. That's why faith is so important. Why am I talking about any of this? Is because what the enemy is fighting is the cultivation of faith in you. Because the enemy knows, when we talk about the enemy, let's be more specific. We're talking about Satan, the arch enemy of God and the most beloved of his creation, mankind, that was created in the image and in the likeness of God. Satan has forged himself and has set himself against the people of God. He can't come. You know, it's like somebody that can't see you. They can't step to you. They can't they can't deal with you, but they're gonna they but they trying to come after your children because they know if they can mess with your children that that's gonna get to you. We were created in the image of likeness of God and we would come that he has called us to show forth the praises of him that have called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. So so our heavenly father that he gave his only begotten son, right? He sold his son even as a seed, okay? His son, the word that was made manifest in the flesh. Jesus himself said, said, Lo, in the volume of the book, it is written of me to do your will, O God, that he himself sold himself as that seed. Even as the scripture said, except a corn of wheat fall to the ground. Another translation, say, translation said, except a seed of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it will die, another said, if, if that seed is sown into good ground, what's good ground? Good ground is that heart that is receptive to what they what thus say of the Lord. Good ground is the heart that says, God, I, I'm, I hear your word. I believe your word. And because my heart is receptive, I'm going to act on. I take full ownership of the truth that you have spoken to me. That literally Jesus said that he came unto his own. His own didn't receive him. Hmm? He came unto his own with the message that the father gave him. They didn't receive him. But to as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. I'm saying a whole lot, but I want y'all to track with me. Jesus was God made manifest in the flesh. God, Emmanuel, God made manifested in the flesh. Yet the scriptures do record that when Jesus came through certain places, he could do no miracles. How is it that... God, the omnipotent God, Jesus, who was able to speak to winds and waves and command peace to be still, to peace to be still, who was able to heal the sick and raise the dead. Literally, how was it possible for Jesus, who was God made manifest of the flesh, manifested in the flesh? How was it possible for him to go certain places and do no miracles? What's that to say? Because Jesus himself being the word that was manifested in the flesh, even him being that. There were certain environments that would not allow the potential in the seed that he was to grow. So there are many different layers of revelation going on here. We have to understand that God is a sower of seed, that he sows his word as a seed. And the Bible said that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him. So, so literally when, when, when God sent his son to die for mankind, that was God sowing seed and looking for a harvest. The harvest being the salvation of mankind. I want y'all to track with me. Stay with me, y'all. That the father sold literally his son and gave his son to die. When Jesus himself 
literally was in the midst of being crucified and said, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, lama sabachthani, Father, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? Well, the reason for that was I, he desired that there would be redemption. He desired that there would be restoration in the relationship, that there would be access to relationship with him through his son, Jesus Christ. Therefore, he sowed his only begotten son as a seed. But even in him doing that, he said, whosoever would believe in him. What does that say? That said to the heart of the man that would be receptive to his sowing. The sowing of God the Father is reflected in him giving his son. Where we see it in our lives as believers is this. When the message of the gospel is preached to us, that faith would come alive in us, that we would believe what thus saith the Lord. And as we, be as we begin to talk in the last message, that literally our miracle becomes accessible to us. The wonders of God are accessible to us at the point of believing what thus say of the Lord. That we think about the Roman centurion, and we bring this instance up again, who said, I have a servant, came to Jesus and said, I have a servant that is sick. And I, and I believe that if you pray for him, that he'll be healed. Jesus said, okay, well, I'll come with you. And Jesus began to set himself to even go. But the man, the centurion said, I understand authority. You don't need to come to my house. Speak the word only. This man was so compelled. He was so convinced of who Jesus was and the power that he held. He was so convinced of, of who Jesus was and the authority that he had. He said, Jesus, all you need to do is speak the word. So very clearly, the soil of this Roman centurion's heart was fertile to receive the seed of the words of Jesus and begin to bring, bring forth fruit in the form of faith. That is the, that is when our hearts become fruitful and produce faith in response to the word of God, that is what begins us to give, that is what begins to give the believer access to wonders. Let's be very clear. That is what Satan is fighting. I can prove it. There was very specific instructions that were given in the beginning to Adam. Adam then conveyed those instructions to Eve. Of every tree that is in the garden, God said, you may freely eat, but there's a tree that's in the midst of the garden that you are not to touch. Very specific instructions. All right, let's pause and say, when God gives an instruction, God doesn't give an instruction to take from you. God gives you an instruction to compel you and to compel us in the direction of obeying his word. When we obey what God says, that keeps us, that puts us on and keeps us on the path, on the path of his blessing. The blessings of the Lord that make rich and add no sorrow. So with the instructions of God, God is counting on us to believe his word, thereby to receive his word, that we may thereby be on the path and stay on the path of blessing. The path of blessing is the, is the path of obedience. And let me tell you, if there's anything that I have learned, if there's anything that I am learning over and over and over again let me tell you no matter you could be raised <laughs> lord have mercy you could be raised on the pews raised in church you could be raised around the word of god let me tell you through through life circumstance you will learn we will learn inevitably the the essential importance of god's blessing because i'm gonna tell you it doesn't matter who you are doesn't matter how smart you think you are if you don't have the blessing of god it's not gonna work i'm gonna just say that right there it's not going to work. God is the one that makes his reign to fall on the just and the unjust. And there are people out here who are dealing with some arrogance, feeling entitled to this and entitled to this. The very air that you breathe, my brother, my sister, is on loan to you. Don't nothing belong to you. Oh, no, 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 no. There is no form of riches and abundance and providence that you are benefiting right now that you can't lose. So we have to be careful. We have to be careful about how, our, how we posture ourselves before God. That's why the psalmist said, don't fret yourself for evildoers and those that seem to be prospering in their, in their ways. Don't do, do not. Let's, let's take it even further. Do not fret yourself because of people that seem to be prospering in a godless state, because the reality is in the in the equity and the arithmetic of God before it's all said and done. It will be proven that it is better to please God than man. It will be proven that God faithfully rewards the proud doer and he gives he resists the proud and he will give grace and will manifest a merited favor to the humble. That's what the word of God declares. Sometimes we begin to look at a thing on the onset 
We look at the thing, it's not that we don't want people to do well, but a lot of times we begin to look at ourselves comparatively and we look at what we have compared to other people. And we like, God, I'm the one that's here believing your word. I'm the one that's here trying to work up my soul salvation with fear and trembling. You got these folk over here giving you the middle finger and they prospering and they got money and they have opportunities, so forth and so on. But listen, again, he faithfully rewards the proud doer and there will be a reward. He said, "There, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. But I want to tell you something, what comes to me right now. There's a lot of things moving in step with what the Bible says you have not because you ask not. You have not because you ask not. Okay, when we ask for something, asking God to do something in our lives according to his word is actually an expression of faith and is a manifestation of expectation. If we truly have faith in God, it's going to compel us to seek some things from him. It's going to compel us to come Him, to come to him. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said, take your yoke upon me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Okay, we have got to till the ground. If, we would, if you would track with me, and if we would visualize, visualize ourselves as a seed, that the Lord would desire for us being the, the being the ones that embody, being the ones who are the receptacles of his incorruptible word, the incorruptible seed of his word. Upon believing his word, we become now a seed. In and ourselves, we become a seed. And we begin to invest ourselves into the fertile ground of his presence. We begin to invest ourselves into the fertile ground of his word. And God is saying that if we will do that, fruit will be produced. That there's not going to be any time wasted presenting ourselves before the Lord and, and coming in his presence with expectation. Not coming unto him as unto a God that was hewn out of stone. Not coming unto him like a God that was that was made out of melted metals and, and fashioned after brute beasts and hooved animals. No. But he wants us to come unto him as unto a faithful creator who lives. And behold, he is alive forevermore. That he desires for us to sow ourselves and sow our lives and sow our effort into his presence with the expectation that there will be a yield, there will be benefits, that we will see the wonders of God, the miracles of God, and we will see the provision of God as a result of sowing ourselves into his presence. All right. I'm going to share this with you right now. Lord have mercy. You're taking this on a journey today. Jesus was telling them after he gave them all of the examples of the ground that the seed wouldn't grow. And he said, when, 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 when the seed fell on good ground, there came 60 and a hundredfold. When it fell on good ground, when the good seed was, was, was thereby placed in an environment where the seed could grow, that's when fruitfulness happened. Fruitfulness did not happen just because the seed had potential. Fruit didn't happen just because the seed was good. That wasn't enough. Let's pause right there for a moment. Do you know that you don't belong in every environment? Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in this law, he doth meditate day and night, and he will be like a tree planted by a tree planted by the rivers of water. How is the tree planted? With a seed planted by the rivers of water. And that as a result, he will bring forth fruit in his season. His leaf will not wither and whatsoever he does will prosper. Let's, take, let's walk it back. He will be like a tree planted. Trees are planted in the form of a seed by the rivers of water. Do you understand that every environment is not like the rivers of water? You are not going to prosper in every environment. With all of the potential that God has seeded into you. The Bible said these treasures as he placed in earthen vessels, earthen mean from the earth, that God has formed man from the earth, from the dust of the ground, God made man, is what the scriptures say. But you must know, beloved, some of the things that we are not seeing are not because we are bad seed or that there's anything wrong with us, but there's everything wrong with our environment. And sometimes it's everything wrong with our connection. Some, oh, sheri alamandi o kubashai. Sometimes it's not you, the seed, that's the problem. It's the ground that you in. It's the environment that you in. It's the connection that you have that's killing 
the productivity and killing the growth that could be seen from your life. And then the worst thing that we could do is not be open to moving ourselves from a place that cannot bring forth fruit. Some of the situations that some of us have found ourselves in, we by the wayside. We're not even in any soul. We are not, we are like seed that is by the wayside. So disconnected. Disconnected to the point where we are not even coming to God to even inquire of him. That's like seed that's sown by the wayside. But then there are those of us who are actually believe and we actually believe the word of the Lord. We actually pray. We, we, we actually have faith and conviction that God is real. But we are like those who find ourselves in stony places and we're battling with unbelief. Why? Because we have found ourselves literally in an environment that is restrictive and constrictive to the word of truth. What are we saying here? You are not going to prosper in every environment. Every environment is not going to feed what it is that God has placed inside of you. And that's how we have to begin to pray. This is not a lecture. This is an admonition to you who carry purpose. Literally, how do you carry purpose? This is, let me tell you how you carry purpose. You carry purpose so much like Jeremiah, where, where God said to him, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. And he said, I sanctified you a prophet amongst the nation. I have literally, I created you. And when you were conceived in your mother's womb, he said, I, the Lord, your God, sold purpose into you. I knew even then, before you were yet formed, while you were yet imperfect, when you were in an immature state, you were not even complete in your mother's womb. Delivery, you were in the state of prematurity before birth. I knew exactly what I had called you to do and who I had called you to be. And this is to suggest to us, beloved, this is to suggest to us that God knows our name. He knows our name. He knows what he's called us to do. But as much as God has sown purpose into us, in order for us to see the manifestation of that purpose, we have to sow ourselves back into him. As we prepare to close, coming up on the 21 minute mark. If we want to see fruitfulness in our life in every area, it's not just about what God has sown into us. It's not just about knowing that God has given us potential, that he sold things into us, that He that, that, that there is an expected end. Jeremiah 29, 11, that God has thoughts and dreams that he dreams for us as his people. It's not just enough to know that God has sown wonders that, are, that we are full of pregnant possibilities. It's not just enough to know that, but to realize that just as much as God has sown purpose into us, in order for us to see the manifestation of that purpose we have to sow ourselves back into god without hesitation without without limitation without restriction without distraction the enemy will set himself to do anything to stop you from sowing yourself back into god he don't want you to sow yourself back into the lord he doesn't want you to sow yourself into his presence he don't want you to be in an environment he doesn't want you, one, to be found in the presence of the Lord, where, wherein you can receive the instructions that will show you where you need to be, where God wants to place you to be fruitful. The lack of fruitfulness is not because you don't have the capacity to produce fruit. The lack of fruitfulness in our lives as believers, along with unbelief, because unbelief is just going to kill the crop, period. That it is impossible to please God or see God be delighted in the life of a person who don't believe because the person that don't believe is condemned already. But when we believe God now, we have to we have to literally as God sowed purpose into us and we say, Lord, I want to discover the fullness of what it is that you have purpose for my life. Father, I sow myself like a seed back into your presence that you might reveal and bring forth and manifest out of my life the fullness of the potential that you sowed into my life. Are y'all following me, beloved? Every environment is not an environment in which you will flourish. Let us begin to seek the face of God and ask him to reveal to us, especially when we are coming up on these droughts and we're coming up on these dry spells and we or we are in environments where people are, listen, uh oh, it comes to me. I know, Lord have mercy. I'm trying to come to a close, but here it comes. Uh, many of us have found ourselves working with or for people who are very abusive that will tell you what you are not. That will tell you that you are not good enough. That will tell you that you don't have the capability, that you don't have the potential. 
and they call themselves leaders, but they are actually agents of the enemy to cause you to believe that God hasn't given you something great. I'm here to let you know that God has given you something great. I don't care where you came from, who your parents are, how much money you didn't have when you were young. I'm telling you the fact that you were brought out of your mother's womb. God summons you into this realm of the living with purpose in mind. There's greatness living on the inside of you. And the enemy's job is to use people and circumstances in situations to cause you to believe that you are not carrying something but whether you are a man or a woman I'm telling you you are pregnant with purpose that you are carrying there's something that you are carrying in your belly that God wants to deliver to the earth but if you want what God has sown into you to be seen in this earth realm in full manifestation as he gave it to you give it to him Take what he has given you and sow it back to him and bring it to him. And do not believe the words of anyone who is talking about it. Has God said, just like the serpent in the beginning, has God said, has God said, has God said, is that what God really said? You really think that God has got greatness? You really think that you can do something? You really think that you carry something? You really think you got ministry? You really think that you can? No, 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 no. That's nothing but the serpentile activity of the enemy who does not uh, want the faith in you to come to a place of maturity to where as you release it and act on it. He wants you to get analysis paralysis to where as you stay stuck in a situation that may not be conducive to you bring a forth fruit. Don't allow the enemy to trick you into believing that you are stuck. You are not stuck. Oh, no. At the point of believing the word of the Lord, move in the direction that he tells you to move. And believe that, th that the will of God is that you prosper and be in good health as your souls prosper. Believe that and take it back to God and say it is written. The word that God gives us, we take back to God in pr prayer and we say, God, you said prayer is the place where we remind God of his promises and we begin to see him pour out on our lives according to what he has promised us in his word there is so much revelation that is coming right now so listen I'm gonna leave you with this beloved as God has sown purpose into you for those of you who are who are spirit-filled believers who have said I receive Lord fill me with your Holy Spirit for those who haven't received the baptism of the Holy Ghost take a moment and say Lord Jesus I believe in you I receive you as my Lord and Savior I want you to be my God and King I believe that you lived, you died and rose again with all power in heaven and earth which was given unto you I submit to your Lordship fill me with your Holy Spirit pray that prayer and for every spirit-filled blood-washed believer every one of you literally begin to pray and say lord i ask that you place that you show me the places where i need to be to bring forth fruit show me show me guide me lead me show me oh god where i need to be in order to bring forth the fruit that i know you want to bring forth from my life to give you glory anything that god any seed that god has sown into you according to his word and his power any seed that God has sown into you, he wants to, he's looking for a crop. He's looking for a harvest. And with that, and, and with the harvesting that will come from your life, God will get glory. He wants to get the glory out of your life. God has sown purpose into you, beloved. Sow your life back into his presence and into his word. Believe his word and begin to see the manifestation of every promise that he has made to you. God bless you.